Like Formula One, data is at the centre of CellGP's universe. I'm here in California at the first ever Los Angeles Cell Grand Prix to ask the ultimate question. Just how influential is data to a professional sports team, especially when that sports team relies so heavily on the gift of nature, the wind? In this episode, we'll explore how data informs the decision-making process against the backdrop of marginal gains, how it's bringing race fans closer to CLGP than ever before, and crucially, how it's integrated into the lifeblood of the ultimate decision-maker, the athletes. That's really cool. <laughs> The marriage of sports and data is an extremely powerful concept. I think the opportunity for the athletes, the teams, to leverage data to improve performance is really unprecedented. We've seen so much change in the last decade, and it's going to be incredible to see what these teams can do with the data and how they change the way that they operate and race. And I think we're just at the tip of the iceberg where this potential can go in the future. And Cell GP and data is a match made in heaven. The 10 racing boats who take to the start line on this truly global series are some of the most advanced on the planet. Each F50 race boat has 125 sensors, resulting in 1,700 data channels and creating 35,000 data points per second. That's a colossal 48 billion data points per day. And I know what you're thinking, where does all that data go? Who's processing it? And most importantly, how does it help the athletes? And we start our journey deep within the CellGP tech site. This is the CellGP Insights container uh, where the um, performance engineering team works. All the data go from the boats directly to the Oracle Cloud and we connect to it, so either here or remotely. We have the systems engineers write all the code and uh, make sure all the boats are running equally and monitor the boats live while, while they're sailing. Going to lie, I think, I think it's pretty accurate. And making sure all the systems running smoothly. And we have the data analysts helping the teams consume the huge amount of data that's coming off the boats in a way that's understandable, that can help them like, perform better. In Cell GP, it's the only elite sport where all the data is shared. On the boat, there's 125 sensors. There can be uh, the wind vane at the front of the boat, the GPS, the flight height sensors. We measure pressures on the, all the hydraulic system, voltages and intensities in the electronics. We have alarms for anything that might go wrong. So basically, we can divide the use of the data into three groups. We have the diagnostics. If we have some issues on the boat, we can, we can identify what's wrong and try and solve it. Then we have the performance, which is to basically make the boat sail faster. This one. Yeah. There's another guy. You see the difference? Yeah. Crazy. And finally, we have the strategic layer, which is to, to help the guys understanding the course and the, the place they're sailing in to make them take better decisions. The wind direction is 150 on the windward mark. Yeah, so today it's the uh, first day on the water here in LA, so uh, and making sure that we're on targets and within thresholds and making sure that the systems are working. So the teams have access to all the, this data live. We create the dashboards for them to consume that data and the dashboards will have the current boat speed, the current uh, wind angle. They're all one design, but you can change a lot on how you set up the boat. They have access to the winds measured on each buoy, so that will give them a tactical view of what's happening on the race course. There's so much data coming off the boats. It's about asking the right questions to the data. That's where you'd get a competitive advantage. So this following the target inputs, which is a good sign. The way the data is presented and the accuracy of the data is, uh, is quite unique. You rarely see that in other sports, other companies or anywhere else. So just having that playground and, and being able to do basically what you want and it's up to you, that's, that's quite a luxury. And all that data will come in handy across the Cell GP race weekend, where we'll shadow Rockwall Denmark Cell GP team on and off the water at a brand new racetrack where those insights are more crucial than ever. Oh, and here in LA, we have a four-time Formula One world champion who knows all about the power of data, experiencing Cell GP for the first time. <laughs> well done. Perfect. Well, it's part of our world. We're carrying a computer with us most of the time in our pockets. Some sports are more data-driven than, than others. It's nice if you meet the best of both worlds. So um, obviously you should always focus on the human component because that's the exciting bit and that's the thrill. 
for people on the outside to have that sort of heroism. On the other hand, obviously, you get the chance through data to ramp up your game and to improve and to compare as well in a different way to others, what they are doing, why they're doing it, when, how. To have full transparency and access, I think, is a great tool. That's really cool. Yeah, that's cool. I'm so Surprised glad you got the speed, yeah. Data also plays a critical role in bringing new entries like Germany's LGP team, backed by Sebastian Vettel, up to speed, thanks to open source data so no team is left behind. And to ensure the data is free flowing, every morning of a Sail Grand Prix, the Insights team runs a full systems health check on the F50s before and after the boats hit the water. So what we've got here is the wing car. Uh, this essentially um, pumps in a bit of uh, power uh, and we can test all the readings uh, for the pressure sensors, uh, the wing angle, um, and just make sure that everything's running tickety-boo. So yeah, we might have found a potential failure in one of the temperature sensors for the wing, which is a good indicator for knock-on effects on other data, but for this it's not detrimental to the function of the boat. And once they're on the water, the pressure's on to online the boats. Before teams head to the start line, the support crew take their positions and SailGP goes live across the globe. Eight, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Welcome to the Oracle Los Angeles Sail Grand Prix Port of Los Angeles. With Hollywood as a backdrop, this weekend promises amazing drama in one of the busiest shipping ports in the world. I got a new nice thing on my arm here. A screen that can show some data, actually a copy paste of the wing screen. So wind direction, boat speed, see the calls on other boats, etc. The Oracle data is super important for me. Coming into this team and not sail these boats before is quite challenging and especially because you don't get much training time on the boat. But then you can also see the live feed which means that I can get an overview from the helicopter and actually see where all the boats are. I have a good feeling about today. There's quite a bit of information on the boat that the sailors can see but they also get overloaded so we're trying to add another layer of processing so we can kind of target what we want to tell them and use the data then translate that to the language of the sailors. I'm sitting on shore and communicating with the coach and then everything goes to the coach, he fills it in and provides information to the team. Wind is approximately 20 kilometers per hour. New Zealand turn the boat down now, watch for the line to turn right. Look at this. Clear start again and Rock will dem up. Brilliant from Nikolai Sehestad here. Mark 1 comes fast and it's the day. Viking power, make the turn first. Oh, this graph is true indirection versus true wind speed, so we can figure out if the puffs are coming from a particular direction. This is where we always see good. It's been a bit of a masterclass from the Danish crew here. Get themselves ahead, and they are very, very fast. Rockwell, Denmark, take a bow. You take the win in race number two here at the Oracle Los Angeles Sail Grand Prix. The team sits third after day one of racing, but SailGP isn't just about sport. Sustainability being at the heart of SailGP, we use the data as best as we can to reduce our impact. We reduce the number of people that need to travel, the amount of equipment that travels by centralizing the broadcast team in London and the umpires as well in London. And because we have such a reliable data structure and feed, they can monitor the race live from uh, another continent. And if you're into watching the racing alongside real-time data straight off the boats, SailGP Insights is the online dashboard which is bringing fans closer to the action than ever before. Back to the second day of racing and the Danes have made it to the final, meaning one last tactical team talk before they hit the start line. Spain did well, but they, they foiled through a light spot yeah. into a righty. And it's super light on the course, so CellGP has fitted the largest wings possible. The weather station just out of the harbour, we've got a private breeze, but wind is not turning right out there. Minus 0.5, minus yeah, 1. I'm racing. Good start by Denmark, but they're not on the foils. Who can get the boat going first? Very light here. Where it's bottom mark and the breeze much better on left hand side. Well, you've got to roll the dice at this point. It's time to have a little pop. See? We've all sitting above 25 kilometers per hour the last 10 minutes. I have 252 as a meeting. Look at the speed difference at the moment. Down to 75 meters. 300 degrees uh, wind direction at the top gate now. Gone the right way for pressure here. Speed is the winner of the Oracle Los Angeles Sail Grand Prix. 
Denmark will take second. Second place. And the data keeps on giving. It's also used to calculate the fastest boat of the weekend. And thanks to Rockwell and One Ocean Foundation's More Speed Less Plastic campaign, there's now 1.4 tonnes of plastic waste diverted from our ocean. So what does the future hold for data-driven sport? Everything runs in the cloud, but there's going to be another massive leap with AI. And infusing AI at really all these different touch points, I think will make for a new era of greater productivity. What I love about SailGP is how great the athletes are. So we're going to be able to give them more capabilities, more power in their hands so they can do the things that make them great. So I think the next five, 10 years, you're going to see more advancements in this that's going to make the sport even better. And SailGP is rewarding fans with the ultimate access via their new loyalty program, The Dock. This would take it to a next level and really marrying fans closer to their favorite teams or athletes. And when you can bring folks closer to the action, closer to the, the teams they're following, all good things happen. The value of data is clear to see. It provides a bedrock for athletes to prosper, it informs real-time decision-making, and it brings fans closer to the action than ever before. SailGP is at the cutting edge of data-driven sport, and its partnership with Oracle ensures that the next generation of sport is already upon us. This episode of Beneath the Surface was brought to you by Rockwell.